London Bridge is a Victorian station. Um, it was built um, on a piecemeal basis throughout Victorian times and is a hugely complex station today. Uh, it serves about 125,000 people in each rush hour, that's morning and evening. Um, it's a very, very crowded station um, and is, is in definite need of some refurbishment. The job itself is very, very complex. We can only do bits at a time. We can't get at the whole station. So what, we, what we're really looking for in this was to put a team together that would work together with one goal in mind, which was to, to rebuild the station. And that's what we tried to achieve from the outset with um, Network Rail's partner Costain in the job and the, uh, the designers. And then we brought on board the subcontractors that we think can work with us to achieve this, this very complex task. The project really got going in the sort of spring of 2012. Uh, that's when the design started and we got into detailed construction planning. It's the fourth busiest train station in the UK. So the staging of the project means that we have to uh, do it in slices. And we, we take a, a slice working from the south, we take the existing tracks out of operation, we, we demolish, create a new concourse, we take the old platforms away and then we reconstruct and, uh, and we do a lot of work before we get to the stage where we put in platforms and canopies uh, back. And what we realised very early on is that an in situ solution wasn't going to work for us with those really challenging timescales where we're looking to deliver 15 to sort of 30 metres of platform construction per ship. We needed, we really needed a clever solution. And so uh, with the support of, uh, of Network Rail, we, we said we need to go out into the marketplace and we need to get a provider who's got that capability to develop a solution with us and work through all this complex design and get us a solution for us on the sort of start on site date of October uh, 2013. And that's what we did. So we went out to, to the marketplace and we were looking for a supplier that really understood our needs and, and those needs were centred around developing a buildable solution um, that, could be, that could be completed safely in those very demanding timescales. But also we were looking for, for a collaborative approach, uh, really strong behaviours and people that could come in, integrate into our team and sort of add value and make sure that we, we, we achieved that, that solution. The offering that we got from, from Prater, Prater Watson was, was excellent and really, really gave us that confidence that they could develop a, a technical solution that met the, uh, the architect's sort of iconic concept for the, for the, for the, for the roof structure, um, that they, they got the know-how with their supply chain to to, to bring it all together at the right time and they've got the right behaviours to get involved in the design. So with the use of also with 4D modelling, that really impressed us. It was able to sort of portray the vision to us. Uh, we selected them and, uh, and we, we, progressed, uh, we progressed at a rapid, rapid pace. Uh, the, the time constraints were, were significant and it, was, uh, it became quickly evident to us that the only way to deliver the project was in fact to, to completely unitise the, uh, the roofing package. Um, the the unitising process was, was actually going to have to take a, quite a big step forward um, from, from an industry perspective in terms of how far that process had been taken previously. Um, the geometry and, uh, and the structure of the canopies necessitated incorporating um, a high degree of, of, uh, of structural steelwork into the cassette and uh, the M&E interface requirement on the project meant that we needed to be in a position to install containment and, uh, and, and uh, the ability for wiring in the production, uh, on, in the production line up at, uh, up at Bolton. We looked at the, uh, the scope of works and the complexity of the, uh, of the project and it was quickly evident to us that we needed to partner with a major structural steelwork um, specialist subcontractor. We'd worked with Watsons on a number of occasions before and we knew that they had the engineering expertise and credentials that would enable delivery and we decided to invest um, in, in design and engineering resource with Watsons to, to put that concept together. I think we were quite brave uh, and made quite a, quite a large 
investment in, in a full-scale prototype which was uh, built up in Thursk in, uh, in North Yorkshire. If you want an athlete to deliver an Olympic performance then they need to train and, and they need to be ready, ready for that moment and uh, with a start on site of, of October 13 and a very challenging time scale we didn't have the time to find the problems out when we came to site and to solve them. We needed to be very slick and be able to deliver uh, deliver the work as soon as we arrived. So we built the we built the mock-up, uh, the, the prototype, and we built it and we, we did a lot of focus around lessons learnt and we took it apart and then we put it back together um, and we knew all the issues, the clashes, the interfaces and the broad maintainers, railway systems, our MEP suppliers, our client the assurance teams to make sure that we captured all of their all of their needs. When we came to start, it was a pretty slick operation and, uh, and delivered delivered the works in the timescales that, that we needed. This was a serious investment um, from Network Rail, uh, and uh, and Costain supported that view wholeheartedly. Uh, and I think for us, um, looking back, it was it was a, a critical decision that was made, and, and most certainly the right one. And, and in our opinion. Um, enabled successful delivery of the first stage of works. The constructability prototype uh, was, was built, deconstructed and built on a number of occasions using the actual men, plant machinery and equipment that was used physically on the, on the London Bridge project. Um, so we used it as a test bed and a training uh, mechanism for the guys that were installing the work on site. And what we learned from that process was invaluable. And, uh, and, and certainly enable us to safely construct um, the first stage of works at London Bridge. There was never going to be the opportunity for um, individual teams setting up or doing something differently. We wanted one team that worked together and dealt with all the problems together all the way through. So it's a purely collaborative enterprise that Network Rail set off with the designers and Costain initially, then brought the rest of the supply chain on on the same ethos and that's how the only way that we can deliver this job.